In this video, I'm gonna show you all you need to know about the Squire Classic Vibe 60s Mustang Bass. Hi guys, I'm Tyler and thank you for tuning back into the channel. If you like what you see in this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. So, as I said in the introduction, this video is going to be about the Squire Classic 5 60s Mustang bass, which is this bass in my hands right now. First of all, I should say that this video is in collaboration with Guitar Centre Langley here in the UK, hence the t-shirt. And this is one of their basses from their stock, so if you like what you see and hear in this video, do head over to the links in my description and you can go and check out this bass for yourself either at the store or just get it ordered and sent out to your house. So in this video I'm going to run you through the specs of the bass first of all, then I'm going to run you through just the tones of the bass on its own, just soloed, then I'm going to put the bass alongside some drums so you can hear how it sounds in a mix and give you a bit of context and put the different tones back to back so you can hear all the tones you can get from this bass. So let's get straight into the specs. This is a Squire Classic Vibe bass, so as I always say in these videos, it's got elements of a vintage bass but it's not a fully vintage bass and I think that works for a lot of players particularly the market Squire is aiming for they're aiming for a really broad market, a really broad brush stroke of players and having a bass that isn't quite vintage spec but has some cool vintage features is a really sensible way to go so we'll start with the construction the bodywood is NATO and I think that's something that I've said in quite a few of these Squire videos the 70s P bass has one um, I think the 60s P bass have one, and there's a certain bloom that you get to the NATO bodies. It's not a massive low fundamental, but a nice second harmonic level bloom, which adds quite a lot of punch, and I like. Um, so it's a NATO body. Uh, the neck is a maple neck. We've seen this on hundreds of squires, hundreds of basses. It's classic neck construction and tone. We've heard it a thousand times before. Then we've got an Indian laurel fretboard. So this is a replacement for rosewood, um, and this piece is a nice piece actually, it's not quite as grey as some of the ones that I've seen, some of them look very grey, and once you add a little bit of lemon oil or whatever it starts to gain a bit more colour, but from a distance you'd be hard pressed to know it's Indian laurel rather than, rather than rosewood, um, and overall it has a slightly smoother grain, with rosewood you get quite open pores on the fretboard, and with Indian laurel it's a little bit more compact, you don't feel the grain in between your fingers on, on the fingertips when you're fretting a note quite so much. Moving to the hardware, we have a Mustang Alnico pickup, Alnico magnets which means we're going to get a slightly more vintage, a warmer tone, not so much punch and aggression, a real nice smooth warmth and it's a classic vintage tone. Moving to the bridge, we've got the Mustang style bridge which is kind of a variation on the fender, you get a bit more contact with the body. How much of a difference that makes, I couldn't really tell you that much. I've never compared a Mustang bridge to a standard fender bridge on the same bass. Doing it on something like a, a PJ Mustang, the Made in Mexico one might be the best way to tell. But I can't give you a definitive answer, but it works and it does a good job. I think it looks really cool. One thing to mention about the bridge is that it's a string through the body bridge. So it should give you a bit more contact with the body and a bit more pull across the body and a bit more of a steep break angle as the string comes across the bridge. In terms of the rest of the electronics, we have a volume and a tone knob, some explanatory and then the output jack here. We've got this white scratch plate, a 20 fret neck, a bone nut, some vintage style tuners with a little bit of a flute to help with those string windings and then we have a string tree on the headstock. We have the old school Mustang logo and the Squire logo, as you can see. The base has a four bolt neck construction. We've seen that on thousands of fenders. One of the most important things to note about a Mustang base is that it has a 30 inch scale. So that's four inches shorter than most electric bases. There are a few benefits to having a short scale base. One of those is the playability. It's four inches smaller, so everything feels a little bit easier under the hands, nice and close together. The other thing is the tone. I find that you get a lot more of a warm tone from a short scale bass, a lot more, a little bit of a deeper bass tone um, and not quite so much definition in the mid range. Being that the neck is quite small, the profile is also fairly small as well. It's not the slimmest, tiniest Mustang neck I've ever played, but it's a slim neck. You have a one and a half inch nut and then down at the bottom of the neck you have a decent amount of chunk, it's not super slim. but as you come up towards the 12th fret, it thickens out a little bit, but I think in general, 
it all feels a little bit smaller. It's a little bit smaller than you'd find on a P bass for sure. And it's a little bit of a different take to what you'd feel on a jazz bass. I feel like on a jazz bass the the movement from really slim down at the bottom to fattening and widening out at the twelfth fret happens much more gradually. I feel like on this bass it doesn't really widen out so much. Um you add a little bit of depth and fatness as you come up towards the twelfth fret. But a comfortable neck by all means. And yeah, probably a little bit more along the vintage lines than some of the other Squire basses we've seen. One thing that a lot of you ask, and I always forget to put in my videos, is about the weight. This base comes in at just over 3 kilograms. I'd say it's about just under 3.5 kilograms. So a good weight. It's going to make it easier for you if you have bad back or any of those kind of problems. Overall, in terms of construction, I think this base is pretty well done. It's nicely finished. The finish on the neck feels quite nice. It's a gloss finish, but it's not too sticky and it feels like it's been well done. The control knobs, which is something I always mention in a lot of my Squire videos, they're pretty straight, so I'm happy with those. Bridge is well done, and the, the pickup feels seated well. Things that I'm not quite so happy about, there's a little bit of a gap underneath the scratch plate here. Normally that's as a result of a cable being trapped in it, so just when I finish this review, I'll unscrew that and probably try and just poke that cable. Quite often it gets caught between the body and the pit guard, which means that you get this little bit of a lump. Um, so that should maybe have been caught in the quality control. And a bit of a weird one, this is the second week in a row that I've reviewed a Squire base and the A nut, um, the A saddle on the nut has been cut too deep. So I've had to temporarily pop something in there to make it playable and we'll fix it up after this review. But again, as I said in the last video on the 50s P base, they can vary in terms of the quality control on the Squire. One thing you're getting when you buy a more expensive base, if you buy a Mexican or an American base, is a little bit more time on the quality control. And you're kind of ensuring that the instrument you get is going to be ready to play right out of the box. With a Squire in general, I've come across some amazing Squires that have been perfectly set up and played as well as an American. But in this instance, a little bit, a little bit of something to, to note. And if you do have a problem like this, definitely take it back to your dealer and get it checked out. So now giving you the specs of the bass, I'm going to just plug this in and show you a couple of tones. So this is the bass with the volume up full and the tone up full. This is the bass with the volume on full and the tone on half. This is the bass with the tone rolled all the way off and the volume up. So those are some of the solo tones. Overall I think there's a little bit less of a mid-range growl compared to a P-bass, despite the fact it does have a P-bass style pickup. I think there's just a little bit more bass end and a little bit more of the very top end on a Mustang bass compared to something like a P bass where the mid range really dominates the sound. I think actually on a Mustang the bass end dominates the sound with the treble just giving it a little bit of definition and attack and cut in the top of the spectrum. Let me know what you think of the bass so far in the comments below and I'm going to go through to the back to back tone demo. Let me know what your favourite tone is in the comments below while you're watching the demo.
you've seen the tone demo, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let me know which was your favourite setting from the tone demo. I'm now just going to give you my conclusions on this bass and let you know who I think this bass is best suited to. Overall the classic Vibe 60s Mustang is a very, very playable bass. I think that's probably the most important thing about having a Mustang and a short scale bass. Is there just immense playability you get from it? Something with a short scale I think always makes you play in a slightly different way and it does make you want to maybe play a few more notes. I think in many ways that makes it a really fun bass to have at home as well as an interesting second choice of bass. I think if you have a precision bass and a Mustang bass back to back it's difficult to tell the differences but they are there. I think the mid range of a P bass is going to cut through a bit more and I think the longer scale really contributes to that while the bass end of a Mustang bass is just kind of really fun and addictive. I personally love a Mustang bass around the house for sitting on the sofa or sitting in bed just playing. I just It's just a great bass to grab and just play a few notes on and, and keep your chops up and practice and it's a great bass to have around ultimately. I've also had points where I think a Mustang bass works well on a session and that that bottom end fills out a little bit better um, and it just gives a bit of a different vibe. It's cool to have a kind of Fender tone profile but with a little bit of a different sound. I think overall it is a much smoother sounding bass than the P bass. In terms of this bass itself, I was a little bit disappointed with the scratch plate, but that's a very simple thing that you can fix within seconds. And again, to have a second bass with a nut that's overcut. So there's clearly someone at the Squire factory that's just a little bit over ambitious with their A string nuts. However, as I said, I will be fixing this up and it will get fixed before it's shipped out to anybody. So don't let that take away from what is a very good and very playable bass. Ultimately, if you're wanting a little bit of a different Fender type tone that can still fit into a lot of mixes, I think this is a great choice. If you're starting out or you are a player who isn't particularly large in size, I think the Mustang is a great choice. It's going to make life a lot easier for you and just going to be a lot more enjoyable than a super long scale bass. If you're into vintage tones, I could also highly recommend this bass. I don't think it does the Motown thing quite as well. But I think any old school Americana rock and roll things, it's going to be a cool bass and it's going to be fun to play. The only people to whom I wouldn't recommend this bass are people that want to play in drop tunings because the, the short scale probably just isn't going to handle it no matter how big a string you want to put on it. People that want a bright modern tone, it's not going to really suit that. It is a really vintage style tone and the Alnico pickup really enforces that. And finally to players who want to have a bass for slap tones. I personally just didn't really dig the slap tones on this bass. So overall that is my full review of the Squire Classic Vibe 60s Mustang bass. Hopefully that's all you need to know and um, do let me know in the comments below if there's any questions I haven't answered in this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on this bass and also don't forget to head over to my Instagram and follow me there. The link to that will be below me right now. Don't forget to head over to the Guitar Centre. I will leave a link to their website below as well as a link to this specific bass. If you want to try it out for yourself, you can do it in store or get it ordered. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this. And other than that, I will see you around soon.